Because I know as soon as I get on the field, I can let the play do the talking. One offer can change your life. It changed mine. If you've been watching sports long enough, then you're not clueless to those underdog stories. The underdog story in sports is always the more interesting stories compared to the players that start off as star studded players and end up being superstars. Everybody wants to hear about how Tom Brady went from a six round pick to the GOAT or everybody wants to hear how Brock Purdy went from Mr. Irrelevant to Mr. Relevant. You can look at basketball how Isaiah Thomas went from 60th overall pick to an MVP candidate. Well today's underdog story is going to be a little different. We're going to be talking about Cam Ward and his journey from being a small town quarterback that was unranked and had one offer from an FCS school coming out of high school all the way to him becoming a Heisman candidate and one of the best quarterbacks in college for the most prestigious program in college football. I tell myself every day that I'm the so I wake up and I tell myself I'm the best player in the country every day. On May 25th, 2002, Cameron Anthony Ward, the son of Patrice and Calvin Ward was born. Now Ward grew up in an extremely competitive and sports centric family. Ward is the youngest of four children with all his older siblings playing sports. On top of that, his dad played football and his mom coached high school basketball for 25 years. And if you know, growing up with four siblings isn't the easiest because you got to earn lots of things. So the competitive juices for Ward was always flowing and it was like he was just destined to be a great athlete. And this will help his drive to succeed and to block out the noise at an early age. We set the standard for the kids, Patrice Ward told the Miami Herald. If you want to be better than somebody else, you better outwork them. And that standard that Cam Ward parents set for him showed at an early age. Patrice Ward told the Miami Hero, even when he was playing little Pee Wee football, he was lining kids up where they had to be. The same thing in basketball. If it was a close game and they needed to get the lead, he would tell the kids on the court to spread out. And he'll take the one on one and do his thing. He's just always been a leader. He's always been a hard worker. He's always had that determination that, hey, I'm going to be the best. As we can see right now, Cam Ward grew up with a really great support system, and that support system is going to keep showing throughout the video. Now, unlike most superstar quarterbacks, Ward did not start on varsity his freshman year. He just started on the freshman team. And in the offseason going into his sophomore year, he started to show flashes of why he should be probably starting varsity. Ward was playing seven on seven in the offseason, and he was doing really good. But despite that, he was still told that even as a sophomore, he wouldn't play varsity. It actually went as far as Cam Ward being told not to take pictures with the varsity team to go take pictures with the JV team. Cam's dad, Calvin, called it small town politics. And with Cam putting so much work in the offseason, he was so frustrated that he decided to quit football and focus solely on basketball. Now, the story goes that Cam told his parents and they understood, but they still wanted him to at least go to practice on the first day of fall camp to see how he felt. Ward would tell 247 Sports that I still wasn't getting any reps, but I was having a good time, so I stuck with it. I couldn't really find anything, though, about his sophomore season, but in his junior season, he finally started to get varsity reps. Even though he finally started to get reps, a lack of rest was still a barrier that he had to overcome, and it was another hurdle that he had to overcome as well. When it comes to football in Texas, the offense is more air raid, but for Cam Ward, his high school ran a wing T offense. And if you don't know, this offense isn't really built for a quarterback to show what they can really do at the next level. Ward told 2 for 7 Sports, I didn't have much to do. I didn't have reads to go through. All the routes were either one or two receiver routes. There were no progressions. You knew exactly what you had to do. There were probably six to 10 total plays. But Ward spent two years starting varsity where he had only 233 pass attempts. He actually had 109 pass attempts his senior year, which was less than what his junior year as he had 124 that season. Fun fact, through the first three games of his Miami team, he had 1,035 yards and 11 touchdowns. Through his whole junior season in high school, he had 1,070 yards and seven pass touchdowns. Ward had the prototypical size of a quarterback. He had the arm strength of a quarterback. He even had the leadership qualities of a quarterback, but he had no film. So to gain some notoriety in the recruiting world, Ward ended up going to camps hosted by Texas A&M, Houston, and Texas State. Ward would leave all them camps with no offers or a little conversation. It was hard for Ward to even get attention from Division II schools like Texas A&M Kingsville. And even though he eventually went to Incarnate Ward, he still went to some of their camps originally and left with no offers, but he did impress. During one of the camps, Incarnate Ward quarterback coach Mark Leftwich kept seeing this quarterback that was 6'2", 235 pounds, throwing missiles, and it just happened to be Cam Ward. During a certain drill, Ward would separate himself from other quarterbacks at the camp, and Leftwich actually went over there to go talk to Calvin and Cam. 
he told Calvin that Connor Ward will start recruiting Cam, but when they were ready to offer, he wasn't too sure if Cam was still going to be available. Even despite the lack of film and no offers, he still wouldn't decide to leave Columbia for air raid offense as he loved playing with his teammates from Little League. Now with two weeks ago before early national signing day, Ward still had no offers and he was still set on playing football even if that meant playing for Kilgore College, a JUCO in East Texas. Now that national signing day passed and before the next national signing day, he actually took a trip to Incarnate War on January 23rd. On that trip, Incarnate War will offer Cam and he would end up committing on the spot. Despite War finally getting an offer to play college football, he still had hurdles to go through. One was playing in the pandemic, the other one was learning a new offense as he was going from a wing T offense in high school to now air raid offense in college. Instead of enrolling in Incarnate War in May, like some usual students, he had to enroll in August due to the pandemic. Jumping from the wing T offense that War ran in high school and going from the air raid system that then Incarnate War head coach Eric Morris ran was kind of like jumping from, well, sixth grade straight to college. The air raid offense for Cam was such a learning curve at the time that during some play action play calls, he handed the ball off. War told 247 Sports it wasn't going well. With the passing game, it was the first time I had to make checks at the line of scrimmage. Not only make checks, but signals to everyone. That offense was quarterback driven, which is what excited me about going there. Although the pandemic was a hurdle for War at the beginning, it also helped him. As to start out, he was running with the third team, but due to the pandemic, the 2020 season didn't happen. By October and November, you would see War starting to get a hang of the offense, and his talent really started to show. And by December, he was named a starter for the spring season. And that's when everything changed for War. As in the spring season, War threw for 2,260 yards, 24 touchdowns, 4 interceptions, with a 60% completion rate. War was so great, they won a Jerry Rice Award, which was given to the best freshman in FCS football. Their previous person to win that award was Trey Lance, who was a third overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. Now, Ward would build on that spring season, as in the fall season, he finished with 4,648 yards, 47 passing touchdowns, and just 10 interceptions on a 65% completion percentage. Ward helped Incarnate Ward get to the playoffs, where in two games, Ward threw for 10 touchdowns. Ward would be named FCS All-American, and he would be named Offensive Player of the Year. After that, he would enter the transfer portal. Ward wasn't labeled as the best quarterback in the portal because Quinn Ewers and Caleb Williams was also in the portal, but he was still viewed as a high commodity. Ward had some big offers when he was in the portal, but he decided on Washington State. A big reason for that is because Incarnate Ward head coach, when Ward was there, Eric Morris, he became Washington State's OC. Ward's first season with the Cougars went well. He threw for 3,200 yards, 23 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. He had over 300 passing yards and ranked games against Oregon, Washington, and Oregon State. Ward will lead the Cougars to a 7-6 record in the bowl game appearance. Statistically, his second season with the Cougars were better. He threw for 3,700 yards, 25 touchdowns, and just 7 interceptions. But Washington State struggled as they didn't make a bowl game. And as the season went on, Cam Ward would start to see his name rise in mock drafts, being a day two pick. Even some mock drafts, he'll be a day one pick. And he would actually enter his name in the NFL draft, but he then withdrew his name into the transfer portal and committed to Miami. And when I was in Charlotte for ACC Media Days with CFB Nation, I had the luxury of asking Cam Ward why he chose Miami over the NFL, and he said this. I wanted to know about the reasons why you decided to choose Miami over the NFL this season. Uh, a lot of went, uh, went into that decision. Uh, that's probably one of the most stressful times of my life, me and my dad and my mom. Um, every day for me, my decision changed. Uh, I went to my parents' room. I told them one day I was going to this school. Next day I was going to the league. Next day I was going to Miami. Um, so, you know, if I had to do it all over again, I would. Um, but I feel like the biggest thing for me was there's still food left on the table for me. Um, I accomplished a lot of things at the FCS level. I haven't really accomplished things that I know I'm capable of doing at the Power 5 level. So, you know, I feel like the NFL isn't going anywhere. And, you know, I feel like God, he just put me in this position via Miami Hurricane. Um, and I feel like it's been the best of both world, worlds since then. And one thing I noticed about Cam at ACC Media Days was that his parents were with him every step of the way. See, throughout his college career, and I believe throughout his high school career, his parents never missed a game. So even when Cam went to Washington State, his parents would travel from Texas all the way to let's say they was playing in Eugene, or they was playing in some place in California. But no matter where Cam is playing, his parents are always there watching and supporting. Now right now, Cam is tearing it up for Miami. Through the first 10 games, he has 3,400 yards, 32 touchdowns, six interceptions. He led comeback wins against Virginia Tech, 
Cal and Duke. Right now, you can make the argument that Ward is the best quarterback in college football. And if you ask me, he should at least be third on everybody's Heisman ballot, right behind Ashton Gentry and Travis Hunter. Depending on what site you're looking at, you see Cam Ward either being the first or a second quarterback taken off the board. Nothing less than the second quarterback, though. So Cam Ward went from a quarterback that played in a wing T offense with no offers to a FCS superstar all the way to a FBS superstar. He now has a shot to win the Heisman Trophy, and he also has a shot to be the number one overall pick, depending on who has it. Cam Ward's journey to stardom wasn't easy, and it should be motivation for any kid out there that feels like they're being overlooked or under-recruited. But that's all for this video, and until next time, appreciate y'all watching, I'm out, peace.